What's up everybody, Chris with South Carolina Gun School. Today we're gonna talk about deadly force and self-defense. Welcome back everybody. Like I said, we're gonna be talking about deadly force and self-defense. And I'm not going to sit here and necessarily start quoting laws or and pull up this video and that video and talk about, well, they could have done this, they could have done that. All right, yes, they all could have done something differently. I will say there are some out there that, yes, they lost control. And that's why we do stress training and practice because that will help you stay under control. And to just easily talk about, oh, if somebody does this, I'm going to pull my gun and I'm going to do what I have to do to protect myself. This is where you've got to really make the right decision. You really got to have a good mindset and understand that if you do take that out of its holster, you're putting somebody six feet under. You were taking a life. You were doing violence. And that's also where law-abiding citizens tend to hesitate as they are scared to do violence. Yes, when you are protecting yourself, it's you're doing violence, but you're protecting yourself. Okay? Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to be in trouble. That depends on the prosecutor. There's no perfect scenario. There's nothing I can sit here and... Oh, well, if you say this, you're not going to go to jail. Or, oh, if you do this, you're not going to go to jail or be arrested. It's not going to happen. You can talk to self-defense attorneys and they're going to tell you the same thing. you got to do your best. Because here's what I tell everybody. It's a legal system, not a justice system. It is a legal system, not a justice system. But I'll be honest, what some of us might see as justice is not legal, okay? So to stomp about and holler and scream that, you know, Second Amendment this and I can do that and this is I'm protecting myself, that prosecutor might not see it that way. So that's why I wanted to have this conversation and just kind of help everybody understand i'm not trying to start shit with anybody i'm not trying to say well you know so and so said this that's not right so and so said that that's not right all right i'm just kind of talk about really some of the laws as far as south carolina each state's going to be a little bit differently so again please go in and research your state laws and see what they are i will have some links with some websites to where you can go in and help research that stuff um, but please do your research. All right, so what I'm talking about is here in South Carolina, you can't be engaged in any criminal activity and call it self-defense when you pull your gun and shoot somebody because they pulled their gun to protect themselves. Okay, you're in a place you have the right to be, <clears throat> excuse me, meaning you haven't been trespassed from wherever you're at. Not that you got too drunk, the bouncer walked you out, called you an Uber, taxi, whatever, told you to go home and sleep it off. I mean, they called the cops, cops walked you out, told you you were on a trespass notice. That means you no longer have the right to be there. But at the end of the day, it all boils down to your reasonable fear of imminent peril of death or great bodily injury to yourself or another person. In layman's terms, you gotta be in fear for your life. But what did I say? Reasonable fear. There's your catch line. Your reasonable fear is going to be different than my reasonable fear. Because also things I have to think about is training I received in the military. If I'm involved in a self-defense shooting and they find out I'm in the military, I'm willing to bet my military record is going to get pulled. They're going to see training that I received in the military. They're going to try to use it against me. If they find out I take Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and practice that, even though I've only been doing it about a year now, and I'm still learning. I'm still getting my ass kicked, but it's all about perception. That's something that they can, why did you shoot the 
150 pound man that had a knife coming at you when you've been taught how to disarm somebody with a knife. You take a hand-to-hand -hand combat martial arts. Those are things that they can bring up. It's a legal system, not a justice system. I just want everybody to understand and make the right decision. So again, you got to be in fear for your life. That means they have to have the means and the opportunity to hurt or kill you. Those both have to be in play. Not one or the other, they both have to be in play. They have to have the means and the opportunity to hurt or kill you. If you truly feel you are in fear for your life, do what you have to do to protect yourself. But the burden of proof is on you that you were in fear for your life. If something happens and that threat survives, do you think they're going to be like, oh yeah, I was putting them in fear for their life? No. Means and opportunity both have to be in play. Don't make the wrong decision trying to be the hero. More people talk themselves into jail than out of jail. Be careful what you say. I'm not telling you to lie. By all means, I am not telling you to lie. But you need to be careful how you say stuff because some things can be taken out of context. You know, I've gone to a lot of seminars and I see a lot of these self-defense attorneys playing that scene from my cousin Vinny where the kid's in the little sheriff's office and he's like, you killed him. And then the kid's like, I killed him. And he's like, yeah, you killed him. He's like, he's not saying I killed him. He's like in shock asking like, I killed him. So how you say things can get you in trouble. Again, I am not saying lie. I am not saying lie. I am not saying that at all. But what I am saying is you have the right to remain silent and you have the right to talk to an attorney. So I would exercise your rights to talk to an attorney. Yes, even if you follow the law to the T, because you, again, you might not describe it correctly. Because your adrenaline's going to be pumping, stress, anxiety, all kind of emotions, your cognitive thinking is going to go to shit. You're not going to remember things accurately. You're not going to remember everything. Then your story is going to start changing because you're starting to calm down and you're starting to remember stuff. And it doesn't look good because your story is changing. Exercise your right to remain silent. Mr. Miss Officer, I'm sorry, I don't want to speak at this time. I'd like to talk to an attorney. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not admitting guilt because you want to talk to an attorney. You're not admitting any kind of guilt at all for about anything. Protect yourself, folks. Have protection for your protection. So what I mean is, is look at groups out there. Me personally, I like USCCA. I'm a member with them. I'm a facility with them. They have a great membership program to where you have a legal team with an attorney ready to help you out in these situations. So please, please take a look at that. Go in, do your research, all right? I wouldn't tell you about it if I didn't think or know that they were, weren't a good company or were a good company, okay? They're, they're a great company, all right? They've helped me tremendously. They've helped other people tremendously. They helped people I know that were involved in a deadly force and self-defense situation. That's what they're there for. I don't have the money for an attorney. And especially in a self-defense case, you want a good one, it is not going to be cheap. Here in South Carolina, the average is about $25,000. That's just the retainer. That's not what say you go in the courtroom and start handling your case. Now we're getting billed by the hour. Especially, again, if you want a good one, you're going to spend it. If you're looking at attorneys, I would get a good one. But that's what USCCA has on staff is a good lawyer. Or I should say team of lawyers, depending on your state or where you're at. 
but have some protection for your protection. It's a legal system, not a justice system. Be careful what you say. Make the right decision. Just because somebody's walking out of your house with a TV doesn't mean you need to go and use deadly force and self-defense because technically there's no self-defense there. You're not in really in fear for your life. Yeah, they are in your home. I'm not denying that. But come on, if they're walking out with the TV, let them walk out with the TV. You should have homeowner's insurance. Most of your TVs now aren't that expensive. So don't shoot somebody over a TV. Let's, let's be reasonable here, people. Let's use some common sense. Is it right they're stealing your TV? No. But now look, they put that TV down and they come at you. That's a different story there. You do what you need to do. I'm going to do what I need to do. But make the right decision. We'll keep repeating it so you understand. It's a legal system, not a justice system. It's a legal system, not a justice system. A few other things about South Carolina while we're talking about it. You cannot use deadly force to protect property. Okay? So if somebody's stealing your car at 2 in the morning, you can't walk out there and say it was self-defense. Now, if somebody's trying to get into your car and your child, wife, father, mother, uncle, cousin, whatever is in that car, that's a different story. That's an occupied vehicle. You can use deadly force in self-defense. But if they're just stealing your car, that's property. Now, here's where it sucks. In the eyes of the law, here in South Carolina, and now it could be different in other states, do your research, your pets are considered property. I Meaning if somebody just shot your dog, you can't walk out there and shoot them because you're not in fear for your life. Now, if they just shot your dog and they're coming at you, that's a different story. Now you're in fear for your life. Or if they just stabbed your dog or they're kicking your dog or another dog comes up and attacks your dog, you are not in fear for your life. Now, if the dog comes up and attacking you, that's a different story. But another dog attacking your dog, all right, I'm, I'm, look, don't shoot the master, don't get mad at me. I'm telling you what the law says. If you want to change, talk to politicians. I'm just telling you what the law says. But I'll be honest, that's a hard pill for me to swallow. My pets are not my property. They're part of my damn family. But I'm telling you what the law says. Legal system, not a justice system. So you can use daily force against somebody in your home, your dwelling, all right, your business. So if you own a business, yes, you can have a gun in your business. With your home, your dwelling, they have to be inside can't shoot them through the door. Plus, if you're in a neighborhood, what might be on the other side of that door and the criminal's done moved before you pull that trigger to your neighbor's house. Now, if they're shooting at you through the door, window, whatever, that's a different story. But again, don't just go firing wildly out, especially if you're in a neighborhood. I know they're not abiding, but don't you go hog wild just because they're going hog wild. Make sure you do have a threat that you're going to put down. But yes, if they're shooting at you through the door, you can return fire. Just better make damn sure they're on the other side of that door. But if they're just kicking your door in, go get your gun, get behind some cover, and hey, stop, I have a gun. If you put me or my family in danger, I will use it. Warn them. Try to de-escalate it. South Carolina's not saying you have to make an attempt to retreat like some states. Again, do your research. Some states, yes, some of you crazy states out there, all right, make you retreat before you can use your firearm and self-defense. And some of those even in your own home. We're not. We're a stand your ground state means you have no duty to retreat. We are a castle doctor state meaning where you're at your castle. They have to be in your castle. They have to be in your castle. It is a legal system, not a justice system. But now we can also go all the way back to the beginning and say reasonable fear. Where's your reasonable fear at? Everybody's gonna be different. You gotta do your best. You need to have a conversation with yourself. You need to understand what is gonna happen when you do this. You will take a life. 
but you are defending yourself. If you do it any other way, then shame on you. That's just cold-blooded murder. Don't be scared to protect yourself, but make the right decision. There's no easy way to this. That's why it, it, there's no easy way to it. There's no easy way around it. If it does happen, there's no easy way to avoid it. You want to try if you can, but just please make the right decision. Don't lose control. Please do not lose control. Don't go put a whole 15, 17, 20 round mag into somebody. That's not going to be seen as self-defense. Please make the right decision. I can't stress that enough, folks. It's a legal system, not a justice system. I hope this helps everybody give you a little clarity, give you a little better understanding. I'm going to have links and stuff again where you can go in and read what the laws are for South Carolina and other states as well, too. Do your research and understand. If you have questions, if I didn't answer a question that you have, please feel free to reach out to me. Message me here, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all right, email, website. I've got ways to, all kind of ways to reach me. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out. If it's not a question that I know the answer to, I have many resources in this industry where I can go and find the answer for you. And always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, I hate to say it, but you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range. To my party, we're just getting started. A life is a dream or a nightmare scarring. Hand me a drink, cause I think I'm going all in. Get me a shrink, who can catch me?